I know you weren't expecting this, but you are going to have to go. Removal of the rear seat in this week's Cheaper Jeeper TV. Stay tuned. Okay, what we're having a look at here in the back of the Sahara, the seats have a gap cover that not only cover the gap, but as you can see here, they cover the bolts where you have to get access to in order to remove the rear seat. So here's a look. Now underneath that cover here, I'll just demonstrate for you, under the edge are the clips they call alligator clips. And those are the clips that are holding the gap cover in place. And you have to remove the gap cover in order to have access to the bolts. So I've used the edge of a hammer with some tape to protect the paint finish of the Jeep. I had another one just in case. And I also put a little piece of wood there to provide some leverage as you will see. Any type of wedge tool will suffice. You can see here I'm just putting the claw of the hammer between the plastic carpet covered gap cover and the metal plate in which it is stuck into. And then I just have to wedge it in there and pull it up. And that's it, simple as that. And now we'll move on to the next alligator clip where I used the plywood to give me some leverage. And you can see here as I begin to pull up on the hammer, I'm experiencing some resistance because I put it underneath a metal plate. I have to wedge the claw between the metal plate and the plastic cover. And then you can see how simple it comes out once you get that right. I'm just going to put the cardboard under there for more leverage and you can see it comes up nicely. And just on the edge, just lift it with your fingers and put your claw in between there and pop it out. There you go. So there are the alligator clips and you can see the little teeth that have been pulled upward when we yank the plastic piece out. Those little metal teeth have to be pushed downward again in order to help you reinsert and install the gap cover later. And here I'm just showing you the condition of the, the plastic tabs that went into those alligator clips. They got some scratches on it, but they're okay. But otherwise, when it comes to the gap cover removal, mission accomplished. Now there's the rear bolts that we have to remove. There's three that you can access from behind the seat. Here's another look at them, just so that you're sure which ones I'm talking about. And this bolting behind here is actually for the seat belt, which you can kind of reach from this rear position, but we are actually going to remove it from the other side of the seat later on in the process. So I'm using an 18 mil socket and a ratchet to remove the bolts. It takes a little bit of force, but it does come along. And once those bolts are removed, you can remove the metal plate that the plastic gap cover was inserted into. So you can see here the little alligator clip teeth sticking up. And I'm just trying to show you for the sake of the camera, but what I did was I took this to the bench and I used a flathead screwdriver and needle nose pliers to actually push them down more. But for the sake of the camera and the moment, I was just trying to show you here. So here I am removing the bolts at the front edge of the rear seats and we'll start behind the driver's seat using our 18 mil socket and begin to remove those bolts. And looking here are two similar bolts on the leading edge of the rear seat on the passenger side. And using the 18 mil socket we'll remove each of those. And what's great is that these seats now will just lift right up, giving you easy access to the bolts at the back. 
there's one bolt here. There's the seatbelt bolt that I mentioned earlier. And just using a cord, I have secured the seat up so that I can get easy access to those bolts. And using the same socket, remove those bolts. And interestingly, the bolt for the seat belt connection remains on the harness itself. One thing I noticed is that the rear seat on the driver's side went all the way up, but the rear seat on the passenger side would only go about halfway. There was something catching, so I tried to find out what that was. And what I was able to observe is that on the middle section, the seat belt harness was not only bolted onto a bracket, but there was also a zip tie connected to the bracket of the seat belt, causing it to have a springing back action, which I quite didn't quite understand why it would be there. But in order to continue the job, I cut that off and I reinstalled another zip tie there when I reinstalled the seat. I tied back up the rear seat behind the passenger to remove another bolt and in this case it's the bolt that the rear seat belt was connected to where the 60% seat joins the 40% seat. Have a look. That little bolt was holding that seat belt strap which was not enabling me to fold up the passenger side of the rear seat. So in order to do that I had to use a 15 mil socket and unscrew that bolt to release that seat belt bracket. So there I am, putting the bolt back so I don't lose it. And now I could tie up the rear seat on both sides in a perfectly tight vertical position. And all the bolts have been removed and now it's time to remove the seat. Now on the forums I read one person had removed his side door so he could just feed the seat out through the side door opening. I didn't feel like taking off the door so instead I just lifted up the rear seat and slid it out the back opening. And there you have the rear seat removed and you have a good look at all the space that's available there in the rear of the Jeep with the rear seats gone. Now there's a lot of functionality to having the rear seats gone. You can have all that as extra cargo capacity. They have online platforms that you could purchase to cover over the gap where the rear seat footwells are. Or you could watch the Cheaper Jeeper TV camping sleeping platform video <laughs> and build one of those for yourself. So that looks pretty nice. Now this is one of my favorite shots because it actually contains each of the bolt holes involved in the removal of the rear seat. So you have a sense of the big picture here. And this is just a brief illustration of how you can build yourself a Jeep sleeping camping platform and there's a separate video out for that. But this also shows how removal of the rear seats provides extra storage space. Well that's our video of the removal of the rear seat for the Jeep Wrangler JL. In particular this was the JL Sahara model which had the gap cover so that's a little extra piece that you'd have to remove if you had the Sahara. We hope that you find it helpful. To reinstall the seats you just put the seat back in and install all the bolts the same way you removed them in reverse order. If you found this helpful, please feel free to subscribe for some more DIY videos coming up. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to also include them in the comments section below each video. Thank you again, and now let's move on to our tip segment of this week's Cheaper Jeeper TV. Now for some Cheaper Jeeper tips. There's a number of reasons why people will want to remove the rear seat out of their Jeep Wrangler. But they'll all be faced with the issue where the cargo area is a flat floor, but then they have to contend with the footwell area. However, there are some commercially available products to contend with that. 
Springtail Solutions is one and Goose Gear is another. The links to those products will be found in the comments section of the video. That is of course unless you're going to install the Cheaper Jeeper TV camping sleeping platform. The link to that will be found at the end of the video. But let's have a look at today's special cargo. I'd like to introduce to you Lenny, our new co-pilot making his cameo appearance. Look forward to seeing Lenny in some future Cheaper Jeeper TV episodes and to be sure that you don't miss them, please make sure that you click on the subscribe button and then the bell icon so you'll be alerted when the next video is released. Let's move on to our subscriber tip section. And now for subscribers tips. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, I was thinking of purchasing a rear seat tilt kit to make the rear seats more comfortable for my passengers. Any tips? Signed, Eileen Moore. Hey Eileen, thank you very much for bringing that product to our attention. I know when I sat in my friend's JK, the rear seats had a terrible angle. It was almost vertical, very uncomfortable. So if you're talking about a JK, I'd highly recommend the rear seat tilt kit. Now, when they brought out the JL, they addressed that problem and with the Jeep having two inches more length, the rear seats have more leg room and they put a greater angle on the back of the seat making it more comfortable. And I could vouch for that as I've had experience in the JK and the JL and the JL rear seat is much more comfortable. Now having said that, they still make the product for the JL. So if you still wanted to install one on the JL, you'll probably benefit from today's video to see where the bolts are that you have to remove. From my understanding, I believe you have to remove the front bolts and loosen the rear ones to put spacers in. But from my experience, the rear seats of the JL are good enough and if you do put in the spacers, keep in mind that the rear seats won't fold down as flat as they did without the spacers. So thanks Eileen Moore. Hey, so that's it for this week's Cheaper Jeeper TV episode. I'm Dino, your host for Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you can get the most for your Jeep. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Take care.